Ah, you tree-hugging slacker. Couldn't hack it in business or what? You soulless corporate monster with antifreeze for blood. Doing good versus success in business. That fight just never gets old, doesn't it? This is just one example for two big, chunky ideas with a fence in between and very vocal border guards. In my work as coach and consultant, I often do shuttle diplomacy across that fence. The business monster and the tree hugger are both me. Very nice to meet you. <laughs> so let's look at what we lose through that kind of binary thinking. And then let's disrupt it. <laughs> Humans like things simple. We take complexity and shove it into two big options. It makes us feel like we have a handle on things. And that illusion of control feels so good. It also makes it much easier for us to find other people who think and feel the same way we do. We like those people. It's comfortable. There are, of course, downsides. When we do that, we lose everything and everyone else. And we really can't afford that right now. We need everyone and all their ideas. Binaries flatten and cheapen the discussion. We pretend a vast and varied landscape is an autobahn with two straight lanes that look nothing like the landscape they go through. An autobahn is kind of like a motorway, but without speed limit. <laughs> so when we do that, what are we losing? Binaries bring polarization and fights. If you're not for one thing, then you surely must be against it because there's no other way to position yourself. When we do that, who are we losing? Binaries crowd out the entire space. And then there is nothing left for anything or anyone else. And sometimes that exclusion is probably intentional as some people really benefit from the status quo and have no interest in being disrupted. We're probably all familiar with some of the bigger ignition points. Male versus female, individual responsibility versus state, startup versus corporate, and so on and so on. Each with sides to take and each with fights to fight. The fight between binary options wants to be terminal, last option standing, and then everyone rallies around what's left. Binaries also invite point scoring. Every point I make is a point you lose and only one of us can win. Progress looks different. We could have started making change already towards something we all care about, with each other rather than against each other. We have a lot of comp complex problems to solve as humans right now. And we need all the voices and all the ideas. The planet doesn't have a voice yet, for example. Neither do future generations. So let's get off the autobahn and take a look at what the landscape actually looks like. Let's go beyond the binary. I identify as non-binary. That landscape is my home. This is where I am. I had my first gender conversation in a Catholic kindergarten in rural southern Germany. That did not go well. <laughs> I was being myself out there playing and got called in and reprimanded for moving like a boy. Apparently that was a wrong thing to do as I was informed that was not who I was. None of their explanations made any sense to me, if I'm honest. And I also wasn't particularly interested in what they showed me the girls' things were, so that got awkward. And if I'm really honest, I think sometimes it probably still is. Um, during puberty, so the argumentative five-year-old didn't, 
didn't have words yet to explain, no, no way to tell them that they were spaces they hadn't thought of or seen yet and that people live in those spaces and that those spaces are perfectly livable. And then in puberty, I hoped I would turn into who I was meant to be. Instead, I got boobs and periods. In my 30s, I briefly considered transitioning, but then decided not to because I felt I would still look at my rightful spot just from the other side of the room. I lived in the US at that time and went to the theater in New York, which prompted an existential crisis. Not because of the play, but because of their user satisfaction survey, because it had this long drop-down list of gender options, most of which I actually had to Google. It was a very confusing night. <laughs> Turns out that apart from the planets Mars and Venus that apparently everyone else is from, there are other planets. There are whole galaxies and they have names and people live there. And I wasn't alone. My own life serves as a constant reminder to look closer, to sense deeper, and to explore further, to disrupt positively. So let's do that together. Let's loosen up the stranglehold of the binary and see what else is out there. I'm going to use two different frameworks for that, which I'll combine. One is the Transcend Framework from Peace and Conflict Resolution Studies by Johann Galtung, and the other one is from Systemic Change. It's called Tetralemma, and it's based on classical Sanskrit logic and was further developed by Matthias Varga from Kibet and Inza Spacher. That's enough of the footnotes, no worries. You're actually really lucky because for me that was one postgrad each, so you're going to get a slightly more condensed version. We're going to walk through this together step by step. So pick a big chunky binary that particularly annoys you right now. This could be from politics, from society, your personal life, your work, basically whatever jumps at you first will, will work. Got one? Hmm? Okay. You probably have a sense what option A is. What does option A want? And you probably have a sense what option B is. What does option B want? Hmm? If we use making positive change in society as an example, option A could be looking to the business community. Option B could be looking to charity. Business monsters versus tree huggers, get the point. So that's option A and B so far, probably so familiar. Next up is both. This is not about compromise or winner takes all or, or any of that. This is about genuinely going deeper, figuring out what the sides want and find something that works for everyone. And in that process, it's quite beautiful. The tree hugger and the business person learn how to work together. In our example, there are B Corps, there are social businesses, hybrid social ventures, or all kinds of fruitful partnerships that work. So what would both look like for your topic? Next up is neither. My own gender identity lives here, by the way, in case you were wondering. Neither A nor B. All of a sudden, the space is wide open. Who or what else would be there if neither business nor charity, to stick with our example, was driving things? It could be your village, your neighborhood, government or civil service, your sports club, your faith community, an online community of practice, all sorts of other things. What could that look like for your topic? It might take you a moment 
to get a sense what the space actually looks like now that the two big options have grudgingly exited the stage. So let's give this a moment. Last but not least, the last angle is none of this and not even that. This framework comes with a self-destruct button, which quite honestly for a framework is really cool. This reminds us to question the question we came in with. It reminds us that we are not dealing in absolutes here and that things could be entirely differently and that that option is always available. So what could that look like for your topic? As we co-create the next chapter in this society, on this planet, let's disrupt positively. Let's go beyond those binaries and find some stuff that actually works. I lived in Berlin for a while and spent my Sundays in places like the Mauer Park, where the no man's land of the former Berlin Wall used to be. There are people hanging out meeting each other, buying and selling food and drink, making art and music, meeting each other as humans, where there was enforced separation before. So for our future, let's build beer gardens instead of boundaries. And then let's disrupt positively from there.